Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about a new product from Skywatcher which is the Star Adventure version 2i. I'm going to go over all the features and all the key differences between the new version and the original Star Adventure that I have right here and also I will get into why I will not be upgrading to the 2i. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here it is, I have it. This is the new version of the Star Adventure. This is the version 2i, or is it? Actually, I'm joking, it's not. It's the original Star Adventure, but if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between, guess what, the new Star Adventure, the version 2i, looks pretty much exactly the same as the old and original Star Adventure that I have right here, like I mentioned in the intro. The only difference visually between those two versions is the fact that the new one has some kind of an imprint or a sticker somewhere on the side which says Wi-Fi, and also the mode dial which is on the other side has a little bit different modes which I'm gonna get into later on in this video, but pretty much overall the construction, the build, the colors, the materials, the design, everything is exactly the same which could be a good thing on one hand but also pretty bad thing on the other hand so the good thing about it is that if you have some accessories like for instance i have this awesome pelican case to carry around my star adventure i have a whole separate video about this case if you want to check it out make sure to watch it right here but i'm having this pelican case which nicely fits all of the accessories of the adventure so if the new one look exactly the same uses the same design same sizes and everything I can pretty much use the exact same case. I don't need to get a new case or a new foam inside in order to feed the new Star Adventure. I can use the same accessories and also the new Adventure. You can use the same base. You can use the same declination bracket. If you have a different wedge, like for instance, an awesome wedge from Williams Optics for the Sky Adventure, link down below. You can use the same wedge for the new version, which is kind of nice, but on the other hand, because the design is exactly the same, they also carried over the same design. Flaws that people have been complaining about for years and years and Skywatcher didn't seem to listen at all. One of the complaints that people had is the wedge, because the wedge, like we all know, it's not the best thing since sliced bread, you know, it's uh, it's not very precise. It has this plastic gear right here. So if you mount heavy payloads on this tracker, it will start to be imprecise in polar alignment. If you mount heavy stuff, the polar alignment might be a little bit off. And if you try to uh, try to realign it, there's this screw which has a little bit of play. You have to turn it a little bit in order for the gears to actually start changing the elevation. Also those two precision screws to adjust your azimuth are also not the best thing they are quite finicky you need to screw one in and then it stops then you have to unscrew the other one then screw in this one a little bit if you forget to screw them in pretty much you can do you hear that you can rotate that and basically you can lose polar alignment so you need to make sure that they are screwed in like this but if, if they are screwed in you can actually lose your polar alignment so it's a little bit finicky you know i personally don't complain about the accuracy of this wedge at all because maybe i'm just shooting with slightly you know little payloads like for deep sky astrophotography i'm just using this canon 70 to 300 f4 to 5.6 l but you know if i advance to some kind of small telescopes or maybe add an auto guider on top of that which will make the rig heavier and heavier then i might see some problems with the wedge so i will need to uh, get a different wedge or something so the wedge is exactly the same like in the previous version and also something that i am complaining a lot is the fact that there is no built-in illuminator in this tracker i actually got pretty excited when i was reading about the new star adventure 2i on the website of the on the skywatcher australia website this is pretty much the only place you can find any information about the new star adventure so far at the time of recording this video and i could read that the new star watcher star adventure 2i features a built-in polar scope with illuminator and i was like whoa if they are mentioning that maybe they actually made a built-in illuminator because this one doesn't have a built-in illuminator you have to get this one and then attach it here in order to do your polar alignment then you have to detach etc you can lose it it has a, has a different battery so if this battery dies you cannot power it with the batteries from the adventure and it turns out that they carried over the exact same design and the exact same solution to the version 2i so again you have a separate illuminator with a separate battery which we can lose somewhere in the backpack so they did not upgrade that also so what did they do with the version 2i 
Well, let me explain that. Okay, so what they did with the version 2i is that they added a built-in Wi-Fi into the tracker. So now the tracker is actually hosting a Wi-Fi network in one of the modes so you can connect your phone to this tracker in order to control it. If you have a separate cable that actually is, I think, sold separately, you can connect from this port, which says snap to your camera, and then you can control your camera through the tracker, which in turn means that you can control your camera, how the camera is shooting, how long of an exposure you are taking, how many exposures, etc., through the app. But did they make a whole new app in order to make this experience a lot easier and a lot better from the previous app, which was made for the Star Adventure Mini? No, they didn't. It's the same old app. You may recognize this app. This is the Sam Console Mini app. This is the app I was actually showing in one of my previous videos as a way to know in which place in the reticle do you have to place Polaris in order to do a precise polar alignment if you're on the Northern Hemisphere. So you could use this app in order to guide you with your polar alignment on the Star Adventure. But also this is the app that you use if you have the Star Adventure Mini the little brother of the Star Adventure because that one is all Wi-Fi. You cannot set anything on the tracker. Pretty much you have to control it with the phone. So now they pretty much brought the same functionality that they already had in the Star Adventure Mini into the Star Adventure 2i. So it's the same old app and this app is pretty rudimentary. It looks like an app made like 10 years ago or something because it's probably when it was designed and they didn't update it. There is no new functionalities in this app. So you have your polar clock, you can use that. And also, if you actually connect your phone to this, you can you can pretty much use this app as an intervalometer. So you have your exposure, photo interval, number of photos, etc. And the cool thing is that you can actually set some profiles. So you can set a profile name and you can have a couple of profiles. And this actually is pretty cool because this means that you can have a couple of profiles that are saved in the app. For instance, you can have a profile for wide field photography, for milky photos, where you take like, I don't know, 15 images, five minutes uh, per exposure per one image, and then you are done. And if if you want to do some deep sky astrophotography, for instance, you have two minutes per exposure and like 50 exposures or something like this. So you can have those profiles. And then if you go out into the field, you can just use one of those profiles in order to do the appropriate kind of astrophotography that you are after. Whereas if you have an external intervalometer, you would have to pretty much dial those in every single time. So this is kind of convenient that you can do that in the app. So you can basically sit in a car if it's winter or something and then set it up from the car, from the phone, where the tracker is outside in the cold. So you don't have to stand in the cold in order to do all that. So that's a pretty good improvement. But all of this is pretty much a user experience improvement. It's not like the new tracker is capable of pulling off a whole new kinds of astrophotography. It still is able to take the same kind of payload, which I think is five kilograms or something like this. So it's not like you can mount a heavier telescope or something like this on the Star Adventure 2i. You pretty much can use the same kind of gear that you would use, the same kind of small telescope or a small telephoto lens that you would use on the original Star Adventure. The only thing is the convenience that now you can control the camera through the app. Whereas previously you would only stuck with using an external intervalometer. But honestly, I am very much fine with using an external intervalometer. I'm using this Pixel TC252, which I was recommending a lot of times. If you want to pick it up, links will be down below. And also have a separate video about this remote. You can check it right here. But the one thing on the new Star Adventure that is actually made possible that the old one didn't have is the finer control over the time-lapse modes. Because on the previous one, the only thing you could do in time-lapse mode is pretty much set it to like, uh, 12x, 6x, 2x or half x uh, and this is how much times uh, is it turning with regards to celestial tracking. So for instance 0.5x means that the turning rate is half the turning rate of the celestial tracking and 2x is twice as fast as celestial tracking. So you could use that in order to control how fast it turns in the time-lapse mode. Whereas on the new one, on the 2i, you can pretty much dial in the speed directly in the app as you want. So you get more control over the time-lapse mode. And also there is this new kind of time-lapse mode that if you are taking long exposures, for instance, you are photographing the Milky Way, you have the Milky Way time-lapse. It will actually stop the turn in order for you to take like a 30 seconds exposure or something. Then it will turn a little bit and then stop again. 30 seconds exposure, then turn, stop, take exposure, turn, etc., etc. As previously, the old Star Adventure was only capable of doing like a continuous turn. So you would have to manage your shutter speed in order to make sure that the turning of the tracker in the time lapse is not causing some star trace. So the actual improvement, the thing that you can do on the 2i that you couldn't do on the Star Adventure, the original one, are the time lapse modes, which for me are kind of, you know, I don't do a lot of time lapses. If this is important to you and worth the upgrade, yeah, you can go ahead. But for me personally, I think because the design is exactly the same, the 
amount of payload I can put on the tracker is exactly the same. I don't think any of those new features are really a selling point for me to get a new unit. But if you are on the market to get a new Star Adventure, you're new to astrophotography, you don't have the original Star Adventure and the new one is already on the market, yeah, of course, be my guest, get the new one because the price difference from what I can tell, I was comparing it on the Skywatcher Australia website, which is pretty much the only website that they have the new 2i version already so you can check the price so the star adventure pro pack the one that i have with the declination bracket with the wide angle attachment with all the accessories counterweights etc costs 729 dollars i think these are australian dollars whereas the pro pack of the previous version costs 699 dollars i think also australian dollars so the point is that the difference between them is only 30 dollars 30 Australian dollars I think but again $30 with regards to like $700 it's not a big step up in the price so if you're new to this and the new ones on the market definitely get the new one but if you already have the Star Adventure I don't really think it's worth the upgrade to get another Star Adventure which pretty much looks exactly the same and the only thing it really allows you to do is to take a little bit finer control over the time-lapse mode. I really hope that they will at least be selling this main unit of the Star Adventure separately so if you already have like a, the wedge, the counterweight, the declination bracket, all the attachments, all the other accessories you can just upgrade only this main unit in order to have those time-lapse modes and this control through the app if you really want to have that but for me personally I'm sticking with my Star Adventure, the original one. I love it. All right, guys, that's pretty much for me for this video. I hope you now know what is all the deal about the Star Adventure version 2i. All right, give this video a like if you liked it. Hopefully also consider subscribing to this channel because I am posting pretty much every single week a new video and I have already a bunch of astrophotography related content. I have a lot of content about the Star Adventure, tutorials, how to set it up, how to use it, how to find objects on the sky, different tips. I also have a vlog where I vlogged in the field where I was setting everything up in the field so you can see exactly what I was doing. I even have footage from the polar scope when I was aligning my Star Adventure to Polaris so definitely check out the vlog if you didn't watch it before. Link to it will be here and also check out this video about the Star Adventure you will also find it interesting for sure. But that's it for me. Clear skies, have a good day and bye bye.